have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Do you have an upcoming event? Well, I encourage you to book Beyond Defense Family for an amazing experience. Beyond Defense is a talented group of men and women who have toured the world to display their talents of song and ministry. Did I forget to mention multi-award winners? They're your one-stop shop for making your event the best in the city. Book Beyond Defense today at beyonddefense.org. Click Menu, then Contact. Beyond Defense, your audience will thank you. Beyond the fence. Beyond the fence. Beyond the fence. DB Yes, sir. I got you. True, too. You know I got you. The jewels. Bro, ski. You know I had to fly in on this one. G Will. You know what it is. You see coming like this, this one. <laughs> the bigger they are, the harder they fall. My problems got slaughtered them all. The harder I fall. Fighting like a scary cat. With a back against the wall. Slip, but I didn't fall. I tapped into the fall. Ignorance, I've been through it. That's why I don't want you to do it. I want to inform since I already proved it. You can be fan of a Judas. Come at the end of the ruin. Who are we fooling? What are we proving? What are we doing? What are we building? What are we giving that some of our children? Built a team. Not just the industry thing. We do more than just rap a scene. Beyond the fence is a family tree. With the queen. We do this to worship with the king. And we protect the women by any means. And our children own everything. For the years I want my own fight, no lie. Thinking everything is alright. Turn around and see my father in the light. Back in all three, that took my my whole life. Even one brother, one mother believing. No fun on the life I'm weeping. They say things happen for a reason. I'm believing, we're fleeing. Still offer you life, I'm bleeding. I'm in the full vision, thank it. Structures in my life do need it. Stay friends, I'm a dog, can't see it. In the past, in the past, I leave it. I'm a man, 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 I'm Welcome, welcome to Beyond the Radio. Welcome to Beyond the Radio. And you better be smiling. Beyond, Beyond the, the fences, fences in the building. It's not about religion. It's not about religion. I'm more of a coach study when you were evil. Hey, can't with the most of the way you say it. Welcome, 
welcome, welcome, welcome to Beyond the Radio. This your host, your main man, the coach, David Ben, and I am in the building. And you know what? I am smiling. That's right. That's right. I am smiling. That's right. I have so much to smile about. I'm blessed. I'm grateful, and I'm thankful. You dig, and we got a wonderful show for you guys tonight, a real great topic, because why we want you to be better than you was yesterday, today, and that's right, and when tomorrow comes, we want you to be better tomorrow than you was the other day. We always want you to be greater. Shout out to the Elation family. We love you, we love you, we love you. We thank you for putting them prayers in, so I know when we get on here, we already covered, so we can just go straight in. That's right. So with that being said, can I get a drum roll? The coach, the infamous Shay Samuels, are you in the building? Shay Samuels is in the building, and I'm smiling. I love it. I love it. Shout out to the Elations <laughs> family and all of the listeners. Again, we just want to say thank you all for tuning in. I'm with Coach David. We got an amazing show for you all tonight. So I hope that you have your furniture seat belts on. And if you are driving and listening, that you have your seat belts on. It's against the law not to. Uh, but yes, I'm, I'm excited about this show, Coach David. Yes, yes, yes. Me too, me too. And so, um, so Shay, how have your week been? My week has been, you know, my favorite word is amazing for everything. It's just been amazing, you know. Um, we have um, since, just since 2023 began, we have really um, elevated personally, you know, as far as a label. Shout out to all the artists um, on the Beyond the Fence uh, label um, who are going to be able to take part in a lot of the, the, the opportunities that we have, Coach David. But this week um, was kind of another showstopper for us. You know, we have an announcement to make. We'll do that maybe, what, next week. Um, but it's been another yeah. showstopper for us, you know, things that we have been. I always say the seed that we've sown, you know, we just are watching the harvest of that seed. And so this yeah. week, was it kind of spoke to it. So, can't wait to share that information. But how's your week been? My week has been very productive. Um like like yourself, you know, just, just really grateful for so many more opportunities. And people don't understand like how much work it actually takes. It's not easy to just be like, Hey man, let's do this, let's do that. You really gotta put the work in. It takes so much work and dedication and consistency. So yeah. um you know, to, to shout out to the Beyond the Fence family, you know, uh, because, you know, it's a beautiful thing how we come together as a family and show the consistency. So shout out to every artist um, and all those who are attached to Beyond the Fence, your work ethic, your your zeal, your, your love, your encouragement, your possess. Man, just let's just keep it going, you know. Uh, yeah. And, and let's continue to be great. Um, Before so, we uh, you know, move on. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, before we move on, Coach David, you were talking about the Beyond the Fence family and those who are attached. I do want to give a great big shout-out on behalf of Beyond the Radio, yourself, and to our um, other co-hosts. I would like to say uh, happy birthday to uh, Nikki Faulkner. You guys had a chance to meet her at the Elations Honor Award Show. Um, rolled up her sleeves, got in there with us. And um, and so, as you say, attached, we want to make sure that we do celebrate those who are attached to the Beyond the Fence family. Uh, so, shout out yeah. to Nikki Faulkner, Mrs. Faulkner, DJ <laughs> wife, <laughs> Chief Weezy is what I call him. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so we, we're not going to say happy birthday, but happy birthday, too. <laughs> maybe we can get, maybe we can get our other co-hosts to say happy birthday, but happy birthday to Mrs. Faulkner. Good, good. Yeah, so with that being said, Maestro, can I get another drum roll? The man, the funny, my brother, the comedian, two 
toes are you in the building? Two toes in the building and smiling. Two toes, how your week been, my brother? Man, it's been wet. Uh, I'm glad it finally stopped <laughs> raining because my legs yes. are not re- uh, water friendly. Man, I was up there swimming, man. I mean, it was raining so hard a couple of days, and I got stuck in the rain for a couple of seconds. But other than that, my, my week's been great. It's very, been very productive. I've uh, learned some new things and get ready to hit the road in a couple of weeks. So I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talk to us. Talk to you hitting that so road. Talk to uh, Basically, what it is is uh, I uh, been reaching out to, to to some of my people out of town, and they point me in the right direction. These nice open mic nights. Uh, first stop is going to be uh, probably looks like Indianapolis, and then I'm gonna uh, right. go around the corner to New uh, not New York. I'm sorry, Nashville and Chattanooga. And uh, doing some work on the stages over there in these other little towns that has uh, comedy shows and comedy venues. So I'm going to bless them with some Two Toes comedy. That's awesome, brother. That's awesome. And, you know, man, just the the way you do your comedy, man, it's definitely a blessing, bro, to to see how you uh, take your experience and uh, you make people laugh through your pain. And it's so different because uh, because you have had two amputations. You know, it's it's a wonderful thing how you can actually, through your comedy, still encourage people to help them go beyond their fence. And, uh, man, I want to salute you with both hands right now, bro. Uh, I really appreciate your hard work, your dedication, and um, your heart for your craft. Um. Yeah. I, I, I want to tell you that. Coach do you want to say yeah. anything to Tiny Two Toes, too? Because the brother has been really I, working. I do. You know, um, one one thing I can say is that um, you are the epitome, uh, Tommy Two Toes, of someone truly walking out their purpose. And I don't mean that, you know, no pun, no drum roll to that. <laughs> but you are definitely walking out your purpose. See, your comedy is, is rubbing off on all of us. But um, but you have, you are the, the true epitome of someone walking out their purpose and you don't let what you've been through stop you. And you don't know how often Coach David and I talk to people on a daily basis who give up and they have every they have they have so much accessible to them you know and so you are someone that we can look at and we can reference by saying look what this person's been through and look how they're overcoming and so i would just say you know keep doing what you're doing you know you didn't allow uh, you take great advice. I mean, I mean, seriously, for those who are listening tonight, every single time we give advice to someone that listens, you clearly can see the progression day by day by day. And, you know, Tommy Tuto, since I met you, I've just seen not just you elevate in what you do, but even in your mindset and just how you carry yourself thinking outside the box always, and really just following the principles of what we talk about here on the show, going beyond your fence. Hey, I appreciate those kind words, y'all. I just try to do what God put me here for, and if I'm able to uh, help someone along the way, then I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start um, our topic and tonight, you know, um, shout out to our listeners, the kings and queens, the men and women of God. We definitely appreciate you for always tuning in right here on Beyond the Radio, uh, uh, right here on, on the Elation uh, Network. We do not take it for granted ever, and so you know, you guys keep us going. You guys keep us motivated to to always want to be a blessing. Um, so tonight we want to talk about leadership. What actually makes a good leader, and what does real leadership looks like? You know, what what does that look like? So, I, you know, since I started this topic, I wanna 
I want people to understand when it comes to being a leader, the first thing for me is um, through my own experience is to be a great follower, a great follower. I realize how can you be a great leader and, and then that means if you're a leader, that means you have people following you. You wouldn't know how to treat them. You can't empathize with them if you've never been in their shoes. Anytime you are a great follower, you become a great leader. And if, uh, the, in, in the Bible, Joseph, Joseph, he listened to his, his dad um, talk about God and, 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 and God's um, – he, he he got taught the, so many lessons and the principles of scripture. Uh, they had the the the, the when they, they was actually living in the Torah times. So he he he, he the, those messages about God, who God is, and God was was passed down from generation to generation. He listened to his dad, and because of that, because he, he had that integrity. In, 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 in the words was implanted in his spirit. So when his brother sold him off into slavery, when he was in Egypt, he outworked everyone. He outworked everyone. He was a hard worker. He was enslaved, right? So watch this. He was a follower of his dad. He was a follow, follower of his mother. And he was a follower of his brothers. So when he got incarcerated, he outworked everyone. And because he outworked everyone, of course, he had the gift to be able to uh, interpret dreams. When he came, became second in, in command to Pharaoh, he was a great leader. And he could empathize with people who followed him because he being a slave. He being incarcerated. He being um, in the hole. <laughs> you know, he been in that dungeon, you know, for, for, for years. So once he became had the leadership role, he knew how to navigate. Um, what do you think about that, Coach Shay, when it comes to leadership? Um, you know, I, I like again what you said, and I and I want to add to um, that just if I can. Um, for leadership, the 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 way that you came with it, I want to go from a from that to a to a a workplace environment because we have so many listeners from different uh, walks of life. I want to be sure that we touch everybody um, when we talk about leadership because somebody, somebody might be listening tonight and like, well, wait, I'm a leader at my job. <laughs> well, D Coach David said it best. Um, in order to be an effective leader or a great leader, you must know how to follow. And so to add to that, Coach David, I know that when I was coming up in the work world, you know, you start off in an entry-level role, and the goal is to one day to become a leader. And so what I noticed is that in the workplace, there's what you call influential power. And so influential power is someone who's already in a leadership position, and you aspire to be where they are. And in order to do that, you have to kind of walk the mile in their shoes. They've been there, and they've done it. They're in the position that they're in because they've been there, and they've done it. And so many leaders now, they want to go to the top quickly. You know, I was talking to someone the other day, and I said, we live this, it's my blessing, and I want it now type of life. I, I'm a leader, and I want to be in that position type of uh, role. And, and and to be honest with you, now Coach David and Tommy Tutos, it's so easy for that to happen. Anybody can just position themselves into a leader. But what happens, Coach David and Tommy Tutos, what happens when you have to operate in that leadership role, when you really have to have not just the influence, the influence, but influential power, there's something completely different when you have the influence, quote unquote, but you don't have the power behind it. So, Coach David, I agree with you that you have to work it. I say this to a lot of people: you got to work the job before you get it. So, leadership isn't it, leadership is something on the inside of you, but it's also something that has to be groomed, something that has to be shaped, and something I do believe that we all at some point should work for and want to work towards. Because at the end of the day, once you do that, I think you'll appreciate it so much more. You use the word empathy and have so much more empathy when you are when you do have people following you. Uh, Tommy Tutos? Yeah, I hate to repeat it, but I was going to say the same thing, especially about being a follower. You first got to start somewhere to, to, to understand both sides of the spectrum. So, and in, 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 in to be an effective leader, you got to, to me, you, you have to uh, 
basically be a great example of what exactly to do in every situation. But like you yeah. like you both stated, in order to be a great leader, you first have to be a great follower. So you can understand the people under you they're dealing with and going through and help them to be great followers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um what I and the reason why it what made me think about being a great follower, Coach, you you really was talking about it like okay, let's let's go to back to the workplace, right? Um you go you 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 see people in a certain position and you see a lot of people I think they see their vision is kind of blurred because they see um, the after effect. They they see what's already been processed, and they have not been through the process. Mm-hmm. So and you see your supervisor who's been there 20 years. You call him every name in the book and say he suck, right? Because he tell you, that you're you're not doing your job the proper way. Or you might work very hard and you still feel you should be in his position. The thing is he put in the work, he put in the time, he put in the effort, he put in the ridicule. Right? So it's like if you had that position now, people gotta understand if you're not leading yourself the proper way, you're not gonna be able to lead other people. While you at your job, if you're not doing a good job, if you always late, you call in all the time, and when you do get there, you you more lazy, you blaming everybody except yourself. Then you're not going to get to that position. You have to realize you, you you haven't even earned it. You have to earn that. And yeah, we know that people have different ways of getting to certain positions, but when you come for leadership, much is given, much is required. You got to be prepared. And people, they it's a microwave life. They want the leadership role without having to go through the process of it. And it's so unfair to the other people who who who's following uh, up under you because they're inspired to go up as well. As a leader, you should always want to bring people up. As a leader, mm-hmm. you should never want people to just follow you, follow you, because now you want to be worshipped. Now you're trying to take God's place, and that's where a problem can come in. You always want to bring people up and raise up other leaders. And when, Because if I'm around 100 more leaders, I can handle it. Because I respect their position. I respect their grind. I respect where they came from. You know, um, that's about it for me, Koshay. You have something to say on that one? I do. Um, you know, while you, while you were talking, I was actually going into uh, 1 Corinthians, one of uh, the scriptures I utilize when we talk about the body of Christ and how so many people, um, you know, when they quote the scripture for me, I think they quote it just kind of like, I'm a hand, I'm a foot, I'm this, I'm that. And uh, you, you know, Coach David and I, we always piggyback off of one another, even just kind of when we're having a regular conversation. So you'll hear me say to add to that, you said it one time, uh, Coach David, that each person can be effective and an effective leader in what they're perfect in. I'm not perfect in, but what they are skilled in, right? So you can have seven people at the table And each person is gifted in that area. And for that particular scenario, they're a leader in that right. There's one leader, of course, within the whole maybe corporation or maybe in our case, it's a label. You know, beyond the fence is a label. Beyond the radio, that's our radio show. And you are the leader over both of those two entities, right? Uh, But we also have incorporated inside of that Let's Talk Business Consulting Group which is our our consulting uh, company, and I'm the leader in that right. And so at some point, you have to be able to identify when you are the leader and when you have to be the follower as well. So when you say, well, here I am, a leader in here, here, right? But then because I'm a leader there, I have to effectively, Paula G and I do this all the time. Every time I go to serve, to serve her, and that's truly what following is, you're understanding when to serve. 
Coach David, you shared a couple of stories when you were incarcerated, how when you were there, you submitted under the leadership of others. But on the outside, it turned around. You became the leader. So I think, and I'll read the scripture after the uh, music break, but just focusing on that, every person has a part that they would play as it pertains to leadership. I think an effective leader knows when to also be a servant. That's powerful and, and so, so true. Two toes. What you think about that, my brother? I totally agree because they go hand in hand and you know it's like it's a time and place for everything so it's basically to be an effective leader you need to know when exactly you may need to follow but at the same time in order for you to also be an effective leader you have to be a a great example to your followers Mm -hmm. because it's all Mm -hmm. about respect no one's really going to want to follow you if you're not leading properly and giving an example of you know, like you said, in the workplace, on exactly what to do. If you're not coming on time and, and, and performing properly, how would you expect someone to follow you if you're not doing things the, the you know, effective way or the, I'm not going to say necessarily the company way, but if you're not giving a good example to your followers, then you're not even really a good leader. Right. And, and that's the beauty of this, and, uh, of this topic. And and that's the thing. To be honest, I'm happy you said that. Most of the time, most of the time, it's not all the time, but most of the time, a person won't be in that leadership position because of that lack. And people wonder why they can't get to certain positions. So let's go to the church. Well, uh, everybody wants to have their own church. Some churches flourish, some churches don't. The reason why is it was just like you were saying, Tommy Two Toes. Some 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 of these people want the title, and in, and they're not ready for it. You know what I'm saying? And, and no disrespect to anyone, but that's just the reality. So I've seen a lot of my uh, people that I grew up with. They start their church, and the church just don't grow. They may have like one or two people, maybe three, four, five, whatever, but it don't grow. Um, it don't grow because they really never was a good follower. They they really are like blurred on how to lead other people. And it's like how can you lead other people when you're not leading you? Your life must line up with your leadership. So with me I did thirteen years in federal in the country. I come home, I end up with a great job welding because I, I took up welding in prison. I feel that and I'm not exaggerating. I filled out over 50 applications in one week online. I'm not exaggerating. The next week, I filled out over 50 more. I'm not exaggerating. So when I talk with, when I talk to people about what it takes, if you really want it, to go out and get that job, if you really want it, you got to apply yourself. No excuses for failure. Why? Because I did it. Now, I don't know everything, but one thing I do know how to do is have so much ambition that I'm going to go get me a job. There is no reason to say I can't get one. Somebody is hiring. Somebody is willing to give you a chance. But if you put out one application, two applications, and you just wait on those two, because you feel you deserve it, that's not how it works. You got to go hard. You got to go the extra mile. I can lead in that position. Why? Because I am an example of it. We're trying to be leaders. We haven't even what well, we haven't even been through, and I think it's unfair to the people who desire great leadership. I think we we're 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 cheating them to become great, the ones who believe and trust in us. So I'm I'm happy you said that, uh, Tommy Two Toes. That was that was real. That was excellent speaking, my brother, because we do have a lot of leaders who are confused themselves. Um, mm-hmm. And one thing about 
He's always still led. <laughs> leaders begat leaders. Yeah. So I that was perfect, y'all. Um, with that being said, we at the halftime mark. So guess what? Where the music at? 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 Where the music, 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 where the music. Ain't no music. (laughs) Where the music. Had a dream that she could do it. Could do it. And how she lost her way and didn't stick to it. Stick to she it. wanted the house, the cars, the money. She did all that she could. In her mind, she was so focused. So focused. Doing overtime in the diner. diner. Just wanted someone to wine and dine her. Diner. She didn't believe in herself. Nobody does Believe in yourself Believe in yourself Believe in yourself Even if nobody does Don't let nobody tell you that you can't when you can the doctor for some answers they said she wouldn't make it she couldn't take it she did all that she could getting sick from the chemo bank account started looking real low she knew she could make it she wouldn't take it she believed in herself
house. My daddy is king. Your daddy was king. Proves no fault. Fuck from a tree. The devil can shatter my dreams. I know what tragedy brings. I know what matters to me. My family first. That's why I'm playing my seeds. Raise them be better than me. I'm breaking that curse. Now that I'm free, no longer in bondage. I'm paying homage to the ones who before me. Who went up in glory. My spirit is shining. I'm changing my climate. I'm praying to God. I worship the finest. I walk on the streets to go. I cover the diamonds. Being so modest. I gotta be honest. I gotta stay positive. I'm a son with me. Gotta stay humble. I'm ready to rumble with life till God come get me. Free of the mind is freedom is mine. Look, having fun with it. Dropping them jewels. So, so mentally climb. Look, better run with it. I'm amazing. For the birds, sun's out, guns out, coming through with my best bird. Feeling so amazing, I'ma say it till my chest hurt. Dropping with my windows down, then I make that left turn. The people say you can do what you wanna do. My daddy says you can be what you wanna be. I'm DB, everyone wishing they be like me. I'm blessed, I'm free, that's the recipe. Life says to me, still Bobby too, be a blessing me. They let it be, but I see what's the best for me. Remedy still healing for the ancient three. Got my treasure and I found the key, boy. Tell her later I made it feel underrated, though. Kill my shot like the fed and I never waited, no. I'm a head of the flitter, but that's the way to go. I'm a bills out the pedal, don't wanna miss a low. Feeling so amazing and I'm feeling so incredible. My daddy did his time and now he's free from all the federal rules. Now I'm gonna mention something very hypothetical. Feeling leadership within me, feeling so perpetual. Cherish all your memories, it's inevitable. I wanna be an inspiration, very unforgettable. My family taught me how to be wise and respectable. Open up the gates and now my options are acceptable. I'm amazing. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Beyond the Radio. Welcome to Beyond the Radio. And you better be smiling. Beyond, Beyond the, the fences, fences in, in the, the building. building. Out of every religion, out of every religion. All the culture thing, when you were eager. Mm. 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 That's right, that's right, that's right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Beyond the Radio. I'm your co-host, Shay Samuels. Coach Shay is what they call me, and I'm one with your main man, Coach David Benton, and our co-host, Tommy Two Toes, is in the building. I want to give a great big shout-out, a quick shout-out to our sponsors. If you are just tuning in, we are talking about the definition of leadership tonight. You definitely want to catch this playback when it comes out, but shout-out to our First sponsor, Paula G, Voice Lady Wisdom After Midnight. If you are looking for a, a a quality voiceover, you know, we have to explain to everyone what a voiceover actually is. So when you're looking at a commercial, that's a voiceover. When you are listening to a radio infomercial or commercial, that is a voiceover. If you've listened to um, – to radio programming and you hear your favorite commercial, whether it was for Just For Me or anything of the sort, that is a voiceover. And we want you to select Paula G. Voice, Lady Wisdom After Midnight for your next quality voiceover. How important is it to your business? How important is it to your radio show to have quality work? Reach into her at Paula at PaulaGVoice.com or PaulaGVoice.com. 
gmail.com. Let her know that the Beyond the Fence family sent you. We also want to give a great big shout out to G Will, G Weezy is what I call him. If you are looking for a DJ and you are in the Knoxville, Tennessee area, the surrounding area of Knoxville, listen, he will travel, Tennessee, he will travel and also doing online DJing events. Make sure you reach into him at beyondthefence.org. That's B-E-Y-O-N-D-A-F-E-N-C-E dot org. Last but not least, David, can I get a drum roll? Swing. I love it. I love it. Let's Talk Business Consultant Strategy and Coaching Group, LLC, a Beyond the Fence expansion company. We are taking businesses, I'm talking about, to the next level, Coach David and Tommy Tutos, to the next level. We have a 100% success rate. So if you are a new business or an existing business and you want to do something different, you want to re-strategize, you want to talk about your vision, let, let's talk business. Reach into us at aboutbuildingleaders at gmail.com. We do want to give a special shout out to Pastor Kevin Wayne Johnson, who will be hosting an event here in Atlanta, Georgia, this coming weekend. You guys can find information about that event, those two events, on our Facebook page at Beyond the Radio. And also, we will be interviewing him this week, Tuesday, March 7th. So make sure you tune in for that interview as well. Coach David, I want to go ahead and go into the scripture that I promised you guys right before the music break, if you don't mind, Tommy Tito's, if you don't mind. But I am going to come out of 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm going to come out of verse 7, or verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 7. And it says here that a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. I'll go back into the scripture after a while, but I wanted to talk about this because there are gifts. We talk about the fivefold, Coach David and Tommy Tutos. We talk about the fivefold, and we talk about the apostles, the evangelists, the pastors, the preachers, and the teachers, right? But most of us don't even understand that help is one, the, uh, the gift of help is one of the most prominent gifts. And here's the thing. Everybody has that. But nobody wants to be a helper. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to be a leader. <laughs> so when I read this scripture, I think about how, you know, uh, Tommy Two Toes, if you, you know, you look at your L, you look at your arm, everybody, if you listen and listen, stretch your arm out, if you stretch your arm out, the one thing that you'll say is I'm stretching my arm out, but you don't think about the elbow that helps it bend. That's a help. Nobody thinks about that. Coach David, you always talk about the air. We need air to breathe. How many times do people see the air on a daily basis? So I wanted to emphasize that as we brought brought this back in and we're talking about leadership. Leadership doesn't necessarily have to be the person at the top. Leadership doesn't always have to be the person with the title. A helper can also be a leader. Coach David or Tommy Tutos, you want to expound on that? I yeah, basically, um, oh, go ahead, go, go ahead, ahead, coach. Go ahead, coach. Go ahead, you won't. You it look like you was about to be on the roll. I do not want to disturb that one. Go ahead. No, what it is is too many chiefs and not enough Indians. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to be the leader, but nobody wants to follow. You know, or everybody is want to be at the top and not start at the bottom. Like you said, that 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 microwave mentality. You 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 got to go through the process to get somewhere. You you can't get to the top of the mountain without starting at the bottom. Nobody starts at the top of the mountain. You know, it's so I mean and, and I've noticed that and so 
if you don't have the right leader in the right, you know, in the, in the right organization, basically you, you'll never succeed. And that's that's something I've noticed in a lot of, especially in a lot of workplaces. Unfortunately, right. we have the wrong leadership, and then they wonder why their business never flourishes or company never flourishes or or whatever. Um, I think one of the big, one of the major issues is I, I I see I think people have so much of a low self esteem and want to be accepted by people, and it could be in your sub, and they'll see this person who's the leader. They see the respect that they get around, you know, around, and people won't mm-hmm. want to feel that. Like in mm-hmm. the Bible, we talk about the the golden calf, right? Like that golden calf. They said, "Man, they told Aaron when they were Moses' brother, they said, "Man, make us a god," <laughs> and he made the golden calf, and they worshipped it. We got to be careful not to want to be the golden calf that wants to be worshipped. Mm-hmm. People, a lot of people want to be a leader to be worshipped, not understanding that Moses struggled leading. He didn't get a chance to enter into the promised land because his frustration with the people, his frustration made him be disobedient to God. So much is given, much is required. People don't understand they want to be a leader, but don't understand the responsibility of leadership. They're just looking at it on the surface. They just look at a person that's, oh, he's being worshipped. I want to be worshipped too. Our subconscious tells that. That's why people, man, I see a lot of people, artists, as an artist myself, I see so many artists. They'd rather be famous than be financially stable. They'd rather have the fame. They don't care about nothing else but the fame. Why? Because they want to be worshipped. So we got to be careful with that. Kosher? Yeah, um, again, uh, I love what what both of you were actually saying. Um, you mentioned Moses, and I was thinking about when I did a study on Joshua and how Joshua served him even in the wilderness and became a leader. And so you said it at the beginning, Coach David. You were saying how you have to be a great follower first. And so when you become a great follower into leadership, guess what? It's not going to be hard for other people to follow you. When you have the right mindset, when you have the right attitude, when you have the abilities, you would never have to question at that time. People really should be kind of voting you in at that point. But the predecessor was Joshua, and because of that, they saw how Joshua followed. So be mindful that even as as you're courting a leadership position, people are looking at how you're following. Are you complaining uh, with your uh, about your leaders? That's that was another thing I wanted to mention to you, um, the listeners too, because even in that, Coach David, you were saying at some point there were a number of leaders that you followed, and you knew more than them. You yeah. were like. I knew more than them, but I also knew how to submit under the authority of that particular leadership. And so you have to be able to to do that. So if you're griping about your leader, most people, even in the workplace, we're talking about the workplace, but it happens in church too. When you walk in, everybody wants to be the next pastor. Why? Why don't you want to clean the floors? Why don't you want to pick up the chairs? Why don't you want to be in the bathrooms cleaning up? Why don't you want to do that? We we talk all the time about how Jesus washed feet, but we want to be the ones in the pulpit. We don't want to do the servitude work that requires to be done. Everybody want to be praying at the altar. Nobody wants to be in the back being security to protect the people. And these are the type of things that we don't think about. Why don't you want to drive the bus to pick up the, the, the elderly to get to the church? There is so much that can be done. And I'm just talking about even in the church, but there's so much that can be done. And I find, Coach David, in Tommy Two Toes, that it's on the lower level that you are blessed the most. And I, 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 I mean, leadership is everything. But I remember being asked when I was working in the uh, marketplace, when I'm in the field, I get a chance to see everything that's happening. Leaders in the organization, in the organizational structure, they're always going to the person in the field. Did y'all catch that? Mm-hmm. They never yeah, are talking. They, they don't know. They don't know what's going on. 
the leader is looking at the person on the entry level, the person that's going into this place, going into this place, going into that place. They want to know what's going on. And we have to be mindful that even in that, I say it, Coach David, I know you and I kind of go back and forth with this, but everybody, although may, they may not be a leader in that season, everyone has a leadership ability in them. It's just how you utilize it. Tommy Tito's. I agree. I agree. And then like you were saying earlier about gifts, uh, a lot of people are confused what their gift may be. And, you know, uh, everybody's not meant to be a leader. You know, some, some, some people don't have it in them. If you're a follower, mm-hmm. just be the greatest follower you can be. Because even though you're a follower, technically you're actually leading someone because you're leading by example. And, uh, that that's 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 the gist of it, you know. So quit quit being confused. Whatever you have, use it and, and and use it to the best. Be the best you can be at whatever position it is, because in order for for the plan to work, everybody got to play their position. You know, uh, you 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 said that before you say something, Coach David. I do want to say this though, because even before Joshua, there was another person that was an assistant to Moses. And he did not – you always talk about this too, Coach David, about Michael Jordan going from basketball to baseball. He wasn't effective in one, but he did well in another. And so there was another person in the Bible. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but Aaron was the very first assistant to Moses, right? And so he did not – like Moses complained about him. And he, be, instead of an assistant, became the prophet – so, therefore, it was a different – so, it, it, we would get so hurt, Coach David, if you if somebody said, you, you're not doing well in this, you're not leading well in this, so I'm going to put you here. You can choose to be the best in that position. All we see yeah. is demotion. All we see is demotion because we're not at the top. But I think you said it too subconsciously, Coach David. We all want to be worshipped, and well, people who are reaching for that type of leadership want to be worshipped yes. in their own way. That's that's the reality. People chasing fame, not purpose. Mm, that's good. The leader, because I was chasing my purpose. That's why I had leadership. Listen, like I remember when I started out um, playing sports. I was not the best player in every sport I played, but I was the greatest leader. The coaches put me in that position, not myself, because I had a zeal to really win, and I was a team player. I'm going to make sure we going to be a family on this team. And my coaches saw that in me as a kid. Whether I'm in a classroom or whatever, whether it's just producing great character where everybody else is acting a fool and I choose not to act a fool, to stand out on my own, to do the right thing to the least to the best of my ability. That's still showing leadership. Mm-hmm. Some people feel like rebellion is a part of leadership. And guess what? You can definitely be a bad leader. You can lead people right down to the ditch. You can do that. Lucifer proved that. Michael and his angels fight against the dragon, and he is. And guess what? A third of the stars was swept out and cast to the earth. But he led them. He led them. So now it's up to us to say, okay, the best person you can lead is self. So now you got two entities that live inside us. We got the good and we got the bad. We got the tree of of, of of knowledge inside of us. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is inside of us. You just which one are we gonna entertain the most? Our God sense or that devil sense? Which one is gonna lead you? Mm-hmm. That's how we decide. We gotta stop wanting to be uh focused on what people perceive us as and we on TikTok and we on all these other things because we just trying to be seen. It's a shame that we do things for likes only. 
And we don't get a lot of likes, it frustrates us. It gets to us. Now, me being in the entertainment business, of course, I want the numbers, but I'm following my purpose. I have a purpose to do all these things. And you have people who's not following their purpose. They only follow what they're inspired by. Mm, that's they good. That. They want that position. And they don't even know how to handle that position. And I hope you guys are inspired. You know, every listener, every man and woman of God, kings and queens of the world, we want you guys to be inspired. We want you to come on this show. When you listen to this show, we want you to come out this show and say, you know what? We actually learned something because we want you to actually walk out your purpose. Coach Shay, that's our slogan. Walk out your purpose. Become the purpose. Every gift is for other people to be blessed by. Not for you to be selfishly saying, this is how great I am. This is my gift. Your gift is for other people. Mm -hmm. How are you to use it effectively? That's what makes you a great leader. Not how many people follow you or who look up to you and worship you. But how you lead yourself, people will follow that model because they say, how do you do it? Now you're walking in your purpose. Now you're going to tell this person how to do it. That person going to tell that person about you. <laughs> if you're a cook and you cook great food, you just focus on, don't focus on your money. I'm going to cook this food to make money. No, you're going to cook this food because you're pride. You want, you, you. You love to make these meals, and you get a kick out of people saying, this is some good food. If your food tastes that good, if you put so much of your passion into making sure the food tastes good, guess what people are going to do? Come to get that food, and then you can sell it. And people are going to tell people about that food. Let me tell you why, because you're passionate about how people taste the food. You're, 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 you're passionate about how your food tastes. You want people to taste this and say, this is delicious. You take pride in it. Mm -hmm. But if you focus, man, I want to make this money, you're just going to put a meal out there, hoping and you, like it's going to be mediocre. But you're going to wonder why you ain't as successful as you wish. It's because you're chasing the money instead of chasing your purpose. Chase your purpose. That's my closing, Coche. Uh, my closing would be, one, thank you for listening and tuning in, everyone. Um, we're glad that you are. For those of you who are letting us know, you're enjoying the show. Uh, but, I, you know, I started the first, uh, the second half off off um, talking about, uh, Mo, well, the Coach David, you talked about Moses, and I talked about Joshua. So I just want to end it with one thing that I can say in doing my study on Joshua is that Joshua didn't choose to be a leader. He was chosen. And so leadership is, you know, people are watching you, everything that you do. And people, keep in mind, people are always looking for leadership. And I'm not talking about those who want to follow, but those who are looking for their predecessors to build up. So I want to just encourage everyone tonight to just know that everything that you do, someone is watching it. The opportunity will come, but it's not something that you can choose. It's something that you are chosen to do. Tommy Tutos. Hey, I just want to end by saying uh, you don't have to have legs to walk in purpose. <laughs> just make sure that you use your gifts to the fullest. Use your gifts to the fullest because, like you said, uh, Coach Hay, whatever you're doing, someone's going to be watching. So technically, someone's going to be following your, your every move. So make sure you, you do everything to the fullest. And well, I want to give a shout out to all the listeners. Shout out to all the listeners. We we appreciate the love. Thank you all. Thank you all. Who told you got to put that on? A, uh, you got to put that on your Instagram, your Facebook. You got to say that you do not have to have legs to walk out your purpose. You got to put I that on the goddess and everything page. <laughs> But 
Shout out to all the listeners. We love you. And we see you guys next week. Y'all better come tuned in. And when you tune in, you better be smiling. And I hope you're smiling right now. We love you. And with that being said, we're the music game. We're the music game. We're the music game. Simple man.